tough shop, I'm here to talk cops Who crooked and corrupt, who need to be stopped Who aren't afraid to aim, squeeze the release Round after round, until they put them in sheets I said, any and everywhere, they're hitting the well aware Of what they're doing, and no, they don't care Everything's illegal, and nobody's free We're all tapped to track, yeah You and me, hardwired to tune They watch in the back room, with the cameras on Zoom Laughing to me and you, yeah <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome to Peaceful Anarchism on the Voluntary Virtues Network every Thursday at 1 p.m. And you can also find me on theconsciousresistance.com and theseedsofliberty.com. So today we have Brent Elias, also known as Blooded the Brave, a volunteer's rapper coming back for a second show. Uh, he just released his, um, his cool music video, Man Down, about police brutality. Uh, we're going to have a big uh, conversation about that, about private police and, um, you know, what we can do to uh, maybe counteract the police state in a peaceful <laughs> peaceful way, of course. Um, so he's got a, you can follow him on Facebook, uh, Blood the Brave Facebook page. Uh, he's on his website, bloodofthebrave.com. And his YouTube is uh, youtube.com slash bloodofthebrave. And he's at bloodofthebrave on Twitter. So you got to give him props for uh, consistency. <laughs> um and he's also going to be at Liberty Fest. We're uh, hoping I'm hoping he's going to be able to be performing there. Uh, it's going to be next um, next month in uh, Brooklyn, so um, I'm hopefully going to be there as well. So uh, looking forward to meeting up, meeting up a lot of people. Uh, so uh, so Brent, thanks a lot for coming back on the show. Hey, thanks, man. I appreciate you having me. I'm hyped to be here. Yeah, yeah, we got to uh, got to talk about your, mu- your music video. It's really really well made, well done. Um, and I can tell you know you put a lot of work into that that stuff, so you know you gotta you gotta promote as much as we can, you know as much, especially you know now that you know people are uh, getting locked up for you know <laughs> for the wrong wrong type of salad in their in their pocket <laughs> or uh, you know uh, no seatbelt or you know busted tail light or <laughs> yeah for anything you know, or whatever damn crim- for anything they're damn criminals. What are you gonna do? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I'm I'm nothing without you guys and people like you have me on the show because as you could tell or if the audience doesn't know, my music is kind of against the grain and against the system that um, enables these this type of uh, rule by force to happen. So it's tough for me to get out there, but the people choose and um, you know, I'm lucky I have a lot of good supporters out there who make opportunities like this possible. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so tell, tell us a little bit of uh, background with the man down, you know, what inspired you to, uh, to write the song and, uh, and what, what it's about. Uh, man down is a new single off of my new album piece, which is available now everywhere online, digitally and all stores globally produced by Nevy moon, um, and strong roots records, a bunch of great guys who care about the world and we have a good time making music. Man Down is the new video that I released that may it might be one of the most explosive music videos ever made about the police state. I basically show the cops doing what they do, which is, um, you know, ruling by force. And when they do that, a lot of bad things can happen. And I just listed out exactly what some of the worst cases that have ever happened of police brutality. Um, I was making the album and a couple of my friends made sure that we just, we were, you know, I was getting ready to finish it. And they were like, you can't finish this without describing in detail, just what they do, Mm. you know, just say what they've done, list it out. And so we started listing it out and, you know, they punch kids, shot kids, tased pregnant ladies, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. and, and taking babies, stolen land and put cuffs on the hands. And and Mm -hmm. we just, we just started listing it out and, and it's doing really well. Um, it's it, I think it just hit 5,000 on YouTube in a month, which is awesome for an independent artist like me. And, I had some big Facebook pages share it and it hit, I think 52,000 views on Facebook in a month. Mm -hmm. So that's awesome. So what do you tell people when they, uh, you know, they watch that and then they say, well, you you know, um, Brent, you can't, you can't like, you know, paint with a broad stroke, all police, right? They're just trying to do their job. They're just protecting the innocent and, you know, sure there's a few bad apples, but you know, surely we can't, you know, do away completely with the police. Right. (laughs) What do you say to people like that? I tell them we, we, we we can get we can totally get rid of this form of policing because security is 
you know, something we all want and need. And we should be able to choose and hire who we would want, you know, but we can't decide right now because mm-hmm. they investigate themselves mm-hmm. and hold themselves accountable, which does not work. Um, no one works for you unless you hold them accountable. Mm-hmm. And we do not hold, we can't hold government accountable because they investigate themselves. Um, it, it's, it's grueling to see what that, what is in this music video, and what they have done. And it's morally wrong and it is injustice and it can't be denied. So it's a great way to open the door for a conversation like this, which is, well, how do we solve this? Cause that's what I'm into is solutions. I'm not here to scare people. They get enough of that with the media. I counter the doubt and fear every day. I don't want people to be scared. I want them to see and be aware of mm-hmm. what's going on. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It's uh, it's all about consent and accountability because, um, you know, again, like you said, we have no choice. So, you know, we pay taxes and they get paid regardless if they do a good job or not, right? So they don't see the people as voluntary customers. <laughs> they see the people more and more, you know, the more actually they, they get militarized, they're seeing the people more and more like victims, like, you know, just cattle to be pushed around because what can they do, right? They have to pay taxes, so they're going to get paid anyway, regardless. And like you said, when they do something heinous, they get investigated by them, by their own departments. And then lo and behold, oh, we found ourselves innocent. <laughs> no need to worry. <laughs> you know, our, our cops are just doing their job. They're just following orders and, you know, go back to your daily routine. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's it's laughable um, for people to just accept this. Say they're against monopolies all the time, right. but they don't understand government is the biggest monopoly. Right. And they they and I do say it in the song, you know, they they do whatever they want. Mm-hmm. All they need is a reason, and that's the other thing is you know it could be anybody at anywhere at any given time because mm-hmm. the police don't look at you as their as we are their employer, mm-hmm. which we should be. They look at us like a potential. Everyone, including a, a child, is a potential enemy or could take their life. And part of that is the conditioning we get since we're kids, you know, to believe in this this imaginary thing called authority. Yeah, 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 you're right. Um, the uh, yeah, the monopoly on violence, that's, that's really something that we have to, you know, remind people over and over again. Because it's amazing how people are afraid of, let's say, McDonald's taking over right and <laughs> i mean what's the worst mcdonald's can do you know force people to eat their mcnuggets like <laughs> what's the worst thing they can do but you know when you have a monopoly on violence an agency that can use that can use violence and nothing in that geographical region can challenge them um i'm a little bit more scared of that <laughs> than mcdonald's or walmart or i don't know target lowe's anything <laughs> any one of those big chain stores getting a monopoly that doesn't really fear me uh, you know that doesn't frighten me so it's amazing that people, they place their trust in this overarching violent institution and they're afraid of the petty little <laughs> businesses that are actually voluntarily um, providing service and value to the people that they voluntarily purchase, right? <laughs> yeah, and that's a lot. Like I said, that's a lot of conditioning. They just get people to accept and think this is, this is, how, this is just how it's done. So mm-hmm. I always tell people, be careful what you accept is okay or normal. And, mm-hmm. you know... There are other ways. Mm-hmm. This this box that we've been put in and these walls put up by these people just telling us this is how it is, they can go away if we walk away from these people and do it on our own with volu- you know, voluntarily deciding how we want to spend our money and who we want to hire and living free. It can it can happen. It's, it, it's a reality. Mm-hmm. This is not a, a reality I would ever accept, mm-hmm. and I hope people don't. It's scary. Yeah, one thing I can I can see some people saying when they watch your video is um is you know the you see you you show all these uh, you know disturbing images of people being beaten and tased and kicked and and you know this, I can see some people thinking you know well maybe those people had it coming right maybe they did something to deserve that um <laughs> that kind of uh, be uh you know punishment or uh, treatment and and it's kind of sad that uh, most people think like that like like um. It's like, you know, the master, the master's beating you and the master, if the master is beating you, it must mean because you deserved it, right? Whatever you did, <laughs> the master must be right, <laughs> right? And that's, you know, it's always like, it's like a blame the victim sort of thing, right? Right now, people, you know, as you said in the music video, they say, well, they might say, well, how do we know these people didn't deserve this? Well, mm-hmm. first of all, half of those clips I show and 
what can happen with this out of control system we live in is people who are handcuffed getting beat. These people pose no threat. They're already, you know, subdued mm. and they're, they still beat them. Yeah. Right. Just because they're, right. they've had enough. I show a handicapped person being right, beat. Right. Mm -hmm. I show, uh, you know, another lady who's, you know, totally restrained and, you know, they punch her in the stomach. I show another one who's handcuffed behind her back. They kick her in the head. Mm -hmm. People have to break out of the mentality that just because if they see police on the scene, that this person must have done something wrong. Mm -hmm. That is the mentality that people have. They, they really think that. Yeah, the mentality of people is changing because they're starting to be aware to these injustices and they're starting to see them. And they do now think, maybe I should film this just in case. Yeah. But still, 90% of people do think that no matter what, even if it's someone who's being pulled over, oh, that guy must have been speeding. Oh, he didn't use his turn signal. <laughs> you know, and they just go along their merry way and, mm -hmm. and accept it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Fundamentally, it's a uh, it's a blame the victim thing, and uh, yeah, it's pretty sad. It's kind of it kind of reminds me of um, Larkin Rose. He, he drew an analogy of uh, battered spouse syndrome to uh, statism. <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah, is, it's which, exactly like that. Which is yeah, like uh, you know, you get you know a, a, a wife gets beaten senseless, you know, constantly, frequently, and yet she says, you know what. He loves me. I can't live without him. You know, who would take care of me? Who would provide for me? Who would, you know, give me a roof over my head? And uh, and so people are afraid of the unknown of what, you know, <laughs> they're afraid of businesses, basically. They're, they're fine with, uh, you know, uh, with with violence and threats of punishment and caging. And <laughs> they're I'll fine tell you with what, that. <laughs> the best part about that analogy is, is it's um, it's really accurate because of people being beaten into submission and accepting it. Mm. We are, we are, we are like that mentally. It's a mental, it's a mental thing. And, and it's, it's total control. I mean, any people believe that they, there is no other option except this way mm. and they celebrate it. And, um, it, I work really hard with my music to open up people's minds and hearts to think for themselves. It's kind of funny that people are afraid of, you know, McDonald's or Walmart or Target <laughs> or Apple from getting like, you know, monopoly status um, and where the, you know, the worst that they could think they can do for you is offer you the best quality product at the lowest price. That's it. That's the, that's the worst they can do. They can't force you to do anything. Whereas the government and police and military and, you know, uh, the Board of Education, they have to, they have to be you know, they force you to be fu to, to fund them by threat of violence, right? And they cage you if you don't fund them. And yet we trust that entity, <laughs> that violent entity, you know, over all the other businesses, <laughs> you know, kind of, uh, kind of amuses me. Yeah. Oh, it's very, it's, it's humorous. It's, um, I, but I mean, it's really like, like I, I say, it's conditioning, you know, they get that. How do they get people to accept that this is the only way? And they really start that at a young age. And, and um, shout out to everybody out there who gets people to open up their minds and think for themselves and outside the box. I, I adore people like that. Yeah, yeah. And it starts with, um, you know, it starts very young, right? It starts with authoritarian parenting and spanking and corporal punishment and, you know, asserting, you know, who's the... Who's the authority figure, right? Who's the superior and who's the inferior? And then it continues in government school and then it continues in college. And then it, uh, you know, outside the, the authority figure is the police and the, and the politicians, right? There's always an authority figure. You know, you're always meant or, or, or you're always uh, made to feel inferior. And, uh, and you know, in the eyes of the government, there is no equality, right? There's no equality under the law because... When some people are exempt from those laws, from the from those laws of morality, um, like the police, like the like the politicians, then you know there will never be equality. <laughs> some people are given free reign and and exemptions on these universal laws. Yeah, when people can do whatever they want, um, I would expect them to, you know, do just that. So I, that's another thing is I'm not surprised. Like I, some people can read the writing on the wall. But some people don't even know, you know, what's there. But when you see what's what's on the wall, you can see what's coming. And I mean, it's been a long time for me and my music. And, and you know, we, we were really scared that it would come to this a long time ago. 
and it, and it, and it really has. It's to the point like now where, you know, they shoot kids, they handcuff kids in school, you know, they yank old ladies out of cars and tase, you know, vet, war, world war two veterans at <laughs> traffic stop. It's, it's out of control. Yeah. Yeah, no, and uh, and the thing is that um, you know everybody, well, most people trust the police that they're looking out for their well being, and you know they're really there to protect and serve the the public. But the police are not taught to trust the people, right? They're taught that everybody is a possible aggressor, right? And everybody is suspicious, and so it's always <clears throat> the shoot first, ask questions later <laughs> mentality, right? Which is why you get people, you know, being shot dead for, you know, like one kid, you know, opening his door with a with a Wii controller in his hand, and the guy's like, "Well, I thought it was a gun." Right, right. Or even if, um, you know, a man has a screwdriver in his hand, mm -hmm. uh, you're you thirteen of you guys are that scared <laughs> that you're just gonna mow him down. Right. And yeah, that that's that's happening. And we gotta rem we gotta remember people have a problem with this and they know it's not right, but they're they're They are continually turning to the very problem for an answer. I mean, I tell people the last person you should ever turn to, to fix a problem is the person who created it. Mm -hmm. Government is not going to solve this for you. You know, everybody was waiting for a verdict in Ferguson. Mm -hmm. Well, it doesn't matter what the verdict is. Nothing's going to change because <laughs> they're going to do what they want. And I think it was, um, you know, someone's family just sued the state who, who, you know, who got killed. I don't, I don't know if it was Eric Gardner or somebody else, but they, they won the case and they got $5 million, you know, paid for from the state, meaning us, the people yeah. <laughs> paid. So, you know, here we are, you know, paying for all these weapons to be used against us. Mm -hmm. And we're also paying for their heirs. Mm -hmm. their mistakes we we pay for their mistakes mm -hmm. i mean let's get an officer to pay you know out of his salary let's right. have him work that off that's how freedom works right this isn't freedom this is not, this is not this is not what you could call freedom you could think it is but it's not yeah so so um you know when i talk about you know the problems with um with law enforcement and how you know we should do away with it or we should abolish it people you know say well what about you know protection who's gonna you know protect us from thieves and murderers and rapists you know uh, you just want lawlessness you just want chaos and and what i like to remind them is that the very fact that you're asking me about protection and security means that um that's a demand right and many people have a demand in in you know in um uh you know in a society or in a in a in a group setting then you know there's going to be entrepreneurs that is going to capitalize on the demand and produce a, a company you know like private security to satisfy that demand because you know everybody wants protection everybody wants to feel safe you know you want to you you want your business to be safe you want you want you want to know that you can call somebody to protect you you know of course that's that's a given right so <laughs> So it makes sense that people would make make a business like that. No, you saying that they asked the question who who would provide security proves the point that people would need it. Right. Yeah, I mean, they act like a, you know, well who would build the roads? What do you mean? You know a guy who makes who pours concrete, he would get hired to build the roads by people who hire him and who need roads. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's 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 crazy, man. It's yeah, no. And I I think I just want I just want I just want people to not keep turning to the same to the same people who created the problem. Mm -hmm. Those aren't th those people are not going to help you. That's not how it, we're going to move forward and evolve as free entities as the people we're supposed to be. I know we're built for more than this and we are um we're we're getting there. We're 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 not going to be stopped cuz you know we're very we're very special um creatures human beings we take risk and we make things happen so we're not the type to be stopped but what we're settling for is really wrong right now yeah yeah and 
you know, I, I think about like um, all of the people who are already working in private security, like um, like bouncers, like, you know, mall cops, like, you know, people, yeah, people who um, who provide protection for private businesses. Do you hear people like that? Do you hear mall cops accidentally tasing pregnant women? <laughs> Do you hear people, you know, private security guards in Disneyland? you know accidentally breaking somebody's arm <laughs> or you know assaulting them for no particular reason do you see videos of that on youtube no of course not <laughs> it's a great point it's a great point i mean it's it's really good yeah because they're they're hired you know and uh, they don't want to lose their their paycheck which is the way it's supposed to be you're supposed to hire someone and if they act you know unaccordingly you're supposed to be able to fire them and then hire someone else so they know to act a certain way if they want to keep the contract and get paid. That's what money's for. People are like, money is, you know, I know we don't have real money because it's printed out of thin air. Mm -hmm. But the I, but what money is, is, it's a way to hold people accountable. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's about accountability. Uh, it's about transparency. And when you have a private business, um, that's what that's what the people demand, right? Because if you're not transparent and they don't know what you're doing behind closed doors... They're not going to purchase your product. They're not going to trust you. <laughs> you know, like, um, you know, if, uh, if, if a mall cop does, you know, assault for no particular reason or harass people, you know, he's going to give a bad reputation to the business. And that's not good because then he's going to, they're going to lose customers and they can't survive that way. So they need, they're incentivized to only maintain the people with the highest caliber of, uh, you know, workmanship, you know, people who can deliver the best quality service. So. That's right. The, let's self-regulation. Right. Let's take it like this. Let's let's look at it like this. There's a bunch of businesses and a bunch of malls in an area. Okay, and everyone knows there's this one mall where all these security guards stop everyone and ask him for identification, <laughs> and might right. tase a twelve-year-old boy, <laughs> and might shoot someone in the back for holding a screwdriver. You think anyone's going to go to that mall? Right. 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 They're not going to go to that mall. And right now we all live in that mall and we need to realize there's another way and another way to do this. But right now, I mean, that's, that's, that's it right there. I mean, if pe people want to look at it, who would want to go to that mall and, and risk even living like driving to work is a risk. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we want to get into, you know, real freedom, I take a risk, you know, going out into their domain that they own. And I mean, and it gets people like it really does get people shook and scared. And there are some people who have to live in today's world, like kids walking home, you know, in a bad neighborhood who they, this kid really wants to do something good in his life. And he's just going home from school. Mm -hmm. And if he walks down the wrong block, he has to fear because of a man with a shiny badge who thinks he, he has the right to do so to, you know, scare the living hell out of this kid just for walking home. And I mean, we, you know, we have to prove who we are to these self-proclaimed gods and, and hope that they don't hurt us. Yeah, yeah. And, and the interesting thing, you know, talking about uh, bad neighborhoods is um, a lot of those, a lot of that poverty and drug dependency and welfare, it's all created by the state, right? And, 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 and people look at that and they say, you see, we need the police in those bad neighborhoods to protect the people. And and the reality is, and, and that kind of, uh, to me, that's, that's reflective of uh, of this ideal notion that people have of police as being, you know, uh, protectors of the innocent and, you know, they punish the guilty and they, they uh, you know, the heroic and noble people because they, that's what they see in movies, right? <clears throat> All the time you see police being portrayed like that. Whereas in, in reality, <laughs> no, police don't do that. Actually, they um, are very timid and they are feel for, fearful for their life. They don't put their life you know, um, on the line for other people, really, they, they're really, um, you know, if, if they feel threatened by, by a dog, they shoot the dog, right? <laughs> if they feel threatened, right. they shoot first and ask questions later. So, so really <clears throat> those kind of bad neighborhoods, um, are, are the places where you will find the least amount of police, right? The most, the most amount of police you will find is like in the high class upper income neighborhoods <laughs> where real, where really they're not needed. <laughs> <laughs> right but, but and if they if guns. they if they do make their way down to the bad neighborhoods it's usually in a tank or a swat armor vehicle to <laughs> to right. bust a house for selling 
um, drugs right, right, right. that they wouldn't have to come and bust down that door if the market was left free and open and people were, you know, able to decide and we didn't have a black market of drugs. Right, right. And, you know, the war on drugs is a hoax. It is, it, it's an endangerment to everyone, drug user or not. Mm-hmm. Um, prohibition has never worked. Mm-hmm. And we already have, you know, there, we already have drugs that are legal. It's just the ones that the government gives permission to. I mean, Prozac mm-hmm. is, is, is pretty, it's pretty harsh. There's some really heavy drugs that have been approved for kids as young as 11 years old. Mm-hmm. They just approved it and said it was okay. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a good point that, um, you know, talking about the, the war on drugs, that there's many more deaths um, from FDA-approved medications than there are, that have ever been from hallucinogenic drugs, especially cannabis. Uh, but even if you go with cocaine and heroin, you know, many more people have died from FDA-approved drugs. So <laughs> they die, and then it's okay, though, because it's an FDA-approved death, <laughs> right? Yeah. That's it. I mean, correct. Yeah, it's 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 a joke. And then once again, they say they're keeping you safe and and all your you know keeping your kids away from drugs. And I, I mean, if it was left up to people, we wouldn't we wouldn't really be living like this. It's it's what they have created, which has turned neighborhoods into war zones. I mean, the 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 war on drugs gives an excuse to arm the police to the T, like mm-hmm. they're militarized. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, so did 9-11 and the war on terror because everyone could be a terrorist. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> you know, like they're, they're one of the greatest examples I use is a woman in Las Vegas. Mm-hmm. The police were on a drug raid and they used a chainsaw to break down her apartment door. And her little two year old laid there, um, you know, and urinated themselves while she laid down face down on the ground for up to like an hour. And they searched the house hmm. And it was the wrong house. Oh, shoot. Okay. So, I mean, these are people who don't, you know, they, they don't use drugs. Yeah. And I mean, e- and if someone wants to, speaking on the non-aggression principle, mm-hmm. I don't care what someone does to their own body. And I'm not worried about it. Mm-hmm. It's their life mm-hmm. until it affects me, until they directly impose a threat on me and my worry. Right. And I mean, everyone is just so creeped out by some guy who, I don't, you know. <laughs> let and let him do that. He's not a threat to me until he becomes a threat to me. Then it, it'll be, you know, addressed. Right. It's a difference. Uh, Lysander Spooner uh, would say it's a difference between the vice, a vice and a crime. <laughs> right. A vice is not a crime. Right. But you know, uh, crimes are very simple. Right. Theft, uh, theft, assault, rape, and murder. Right. That's very simple. But and, and there's a victim in each one of those things. That's that's a clear cut way to distinguish. Um, a crime, right? And anything else um, does not have a clear-cut victim, right? Somebody who's smoking a joint in his basement, no clear-cut victim. You know, making a voluntary exchange with a drug dealer, no clear-cut victim, <laughs> right? Right. And the violence that does occur, um, you know, in the black market, uh, you know, between the drug cartels is actually, like you said, created by the war on drugs, right? By the prohibition, outlawing these things and forcing... Because there's still a desire for people to want to, you know, smoke these things, consume these things and buy them. So making something illegal does not does not annihilate their desire to have it, right? So it just pushes it underground in in uh, you know, in uh, places where violence is more prevalent. And so, you know, it's basically you know, you're, like you said, the government creates the cartels and then it says, "Oh, you know, look at the cartels, it's so dangerous. We need to have another agency to fight that, you know." <laughs> so it creates their own reason, right? Right. They create the problem, you know, to get the reaction they want to enact their solution, Hegelian dialect. That's that's government right there, 101. That's how they do it all. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, uh, you know, and the same thing with the war on terror, right? They uh, yeah. you know, they they uh, you know, it's it, it's not really I don't think it's really necessary to even know who exactly, you know, perpetrated 9/11. Um, actually, today's 9/11, right? So <laughs> yep, and it's nine and it's nine okay. eleven p.m. right now. Amazing, <laughs> it's nine eleven p.m. <laughs> Synchronicity, my man. That, That's how I roll. What's that called? Serendipity. You rolling? You rolling with me? You're gonna have a whole world of synchronicity because that's how my life works. <laughs> nice, but uh, 
Yeah, so you know, it really doesn't matter uh, the, the specifics behind that, you know, um, because what 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 they managed to do would was create you know a massive propaganda campaign to um you know to go in as another excuse yet another excuse to invade middle eastern countries supposedly for democracy spreading democracy and bringing civilization to their backward barbaric uh regions whereas uh, most uh, thinking individuals understand that it's more likely for the oil for the um, you know for the poppy for the uh, <laughs> or the fact that perhaps they're challenging the petrodollar or perhaps that they don't have a central bank which uh, of course every yeah. civilized nation needs a central bank right <laughs> yeah and we'll, we'll, we will bomb you to keep you safe and free so you know <laughs> i mean it's terrible i mean the Rest in peace to the 3,000 people who died on 9-11 and more. Yeah. And then rest in peace to the million that have died since in Afghanistan and Pakistan and Iraq and Syria and Africa and everywhere else the war on mm-hmm. terror has mm-hmm. struck. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I saw a meme uh, today. Uh, it said, it said, yeah, rest in peace, uh, the people who died, 2,900 people died in 9-11. And, and then also rest in peace, the 48,000 people who died in um, in Afghanistan, and then like a million plus people that died in Iraq, and then and then like thirty thousand people that died in Pakistan, because and they died for a crime they never committed, right? They just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. Yeah, and, and you know it's oh it's tragic. this just goes back to what we were just talking about with no victim, no crime, because the <laughs> yeah. state believe the state believes in collateral damage. Yeah. You know, collateral damage has to be exposed to the youth, it has to be explained. You know, I myself, I talk to uh, my nieces and nephews starting at about, you know, I, I, I love love is what they get from me. But I'm going to talk to them, you know, in, re- in real terms mm-hmm. so they understand morality. And, and I always tell my nephews, like, you know, one just left for college and there's one that's, you know, he's a young boy still. But I tell him, you know, less than 100 years ago. By 13 years old, you were supposed to be the man of the house. So you had to go get the buckets of water and get the horses and all that. So I'm going to tell you, you know, real things right now. And I'm not going to scare you. I'm just going to let you know it's not right if you do that. And do you accept that? Do you think that that's right if someone does that? You know, when, when I speak of like collateral damage, just mm-hmm. hurting random people to keep other people safe. It doesn't work like that. Yeah, and it doesn't keep people safe. It, it, it You know, everybody is... Uh threatened and endangered by the war on terror right everybody is now considered a terrorist you know it's, it um, spawned the birth of uh, you know the department of homeland security or homeland insecurity is <laughs> more likely put and the tsa and you know the um those those lovely new agencies that i'm sure most people have uh you know, it has made made them more comfortable going on a plane, knowing that they're out out there fighting terrorism. You know, by patting down old ladies and <laughs> and uh, you know, handicapped people. And oh my god, it's just yeah. Uh, last last time I was on your show, we talked about uh, my last music video, Against the Odds, which was about anyone who's been living. You know, was born after nine eleven. They've been living in a world at war, mm-hmm. and that's just terrible to even think about. And it's true. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, one of my one of my favorite quotes is um uh, it's like one one death is a murder and uh, you know that's immoral and then uh, a thousand deaths is a statistic, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, it's like oh, oh yeah, I think another one I like is like um you know, kill one person you're a murderer, kill kill uh kill a million and you're a conqueror and kill them all and you're god. Ooh, yeah, that's that's a good one. That's a good one. I know, right? I know, I know. It's it's it, and and with the new music video that we're talking about now with Man Down and the Police State, I mean, this is what I just talk about in my music. I'm not. I mean, and I'm and and hip hop comes from a place of of awareness. I mean, the hip hop first line I ever heard was "Broken Glass Everywhere," mm-hmm. and I mean that's what got me about hip hop was awareness. So I'm just trying to, you know put the sunglasses on people and ha- helping them see like, and they live. I just want them to see. Um, and I, and I just showed it. And the police state we have now is in direct co- correlation with nine 11. I mean, it, it is, I mean, we, I, if you take a 70 year old person who grew up, you know, in America, they don't think that this is right. 
Mm-hmm. Or if they think it's right, they think times have changed. We got to have tanks in the streets. <laughs> times have changed. You know, times have changed. And it really, crime has gone down. Yeah. Um, you know, people are, are still going to do things like they did in 1954. Things are going to happen. But, mm-hmm. you know, for you to accept the idea that we need tanks in the streets and our um, men with shiny badges to look like stormtroopers, <laughs> you, you're, you are the problem. <laughs> I'm sorry to tell you, but you should have a problem with this. And if you don't, you're part of the problem. You've accepted, you know, Lord Vader's troops and <laughs> we are the rebellion and we don't accept them. And they're not they're, it's We're not going to stand for it. It's not right. Yeah. You know, what's interesting when you um, <clears throat> when we talk about these, uh, you know, very disturbing topics and we show them, you know, videos like yours. Uh, some people react by saying, "Like you know, I know it's going on. I know it's bad, but I don't want to. I don't want to see this stuff. I don't want to hear about it. I just want to go to work. I just want to mind my own business and you know raise my kids. I don't want to think think about this stuff. And um, and it's interesting because it kind of uh, reminds me of the people that lived during um, uh, Nazi Germany, right? And uh, and a lot of those people were just like that you know they knew what was going on they knew the you know jews were dying by the by the millions by the by the by the train uh cart load and most of them were like you know what i don't even want to i don't want to think about that you know there's nothing i can do i'm just going to go to work feed my family <laughs> i don't want to think about these nasty things and uh and it's so sad because it's that exact mentality that allows it to continue right that the the law abiding taxpayer he's what really makes all of this terror true terror and evil possible <laughs> through his compliance right. right yep yep and and i mean <clears throat> people can avoid it but it'll eventually happen to you it will it'll come home to ro- to roost and you know it'll eventually happen to you and the other part is is like you know i know people care cuz they they donate and they have hearts so mm-hmm. I, i try and you know and mm-hmm. i try and hit people in their heart and mm-hmm. remind them of how much they already do care because they do mm-hmm. i mean people have compassion mm-hmm. but i also remind them compassion isn't convenient you can't just be compassionate when this event happens or that event happens. No, you should care all the time about your fellow man because they need you and we can change this and it can be a better world, but they need you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Definitely. The only way that politicians have power is because people give them power, right? They're, uh, um, it's like, uh, there's this, there's this one riddle from the game of Thrones and the, and the guy's like, um, you know, you have a, a, a swordsman, you have a King and you have a rich man, right? And who, who uh, everyone each person tells the other person to kill the you know the, the rest of them and who who lives and who dies and it's you know the first thing you think oh well the swordsman has a sword right so then he must be able to have he must have the power because he can kill people but no the the king has true power right because he has the authority the belief in authority people think that he's you know the word of god right he has he's got exceptional Uh, exceptionalism to his rank, right? So he's the one that tells the people with the weapons what to do, and they obediently enforce his will, right? Yep. So that's the power of the politicians ultimately comes from the people. We give yep. them the power through our obedience, through our compliance, through paying taxes, obeying the law, voting, all that kind of stuff. Yep. And I tell people, obey at your own risk. I mean, you're taking a risk. But I mean, the other beautiful part is, and it is beautiful, it's harsh. This is why people need to jump in head first and, and you know, check out some of the things we're talking about because it's actually beautiful. So it's horrible to find out that they're arresting people for feeding the homeless. Yeah. You know, <laughs> right. it's really gut wrenching. Right. But the beautiful part about it is, is people defying mm-hmm. and disobeying mm-hmm. And saying no, which is a beautiful word and a word we all know when we're young and we forget, which is no Mm -hmm. and doing it anyway. And that is how we change the world. And it's right. And and, and, and actually, when people do that, that little example needs to be taken to a bigger scale. And people need to really look at a bigger picture and think about disobeying like, well, wait a minute. If this is morally wrong, 
you know, I'm, 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 compassion is outlawed, then I'm forced to disobey that. Well, I might want to take another look at the whole scope of things and how I'm living my life or am I being ruled? And do I really own myself? Am mm -hmm. I free? Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's cool. Yeah. Like, uh, I think back to Harriet Tubman and the underground railroad, right? Imagine somebody yeah. uh, at that time who discovered what she was doing. And she's like, you know what? And, and the person tells her, you know what? Why don't you stop breaking the law and just appeal right to your congressman, just vote to end slavery and stop trying to break the law. Just pay your taxes. <laughs> you know, imagine, or, or Schindler, like trying to smuggle Jews out of Nazi Germany. You know, why don't you just, why don't you just go to, you know, if you want to change the world, just go into politics, you know. Why don't right. you be the next Hitler? <laughs> yeah. And change yes. things from the inside. <laughs> that will work, you know. That'll be beautiful. That's the way to do it. No, you shouldn't, you know. Oh, man. I know. What would we do without those those rebels? Right, Those, right. you know, and, like, and the crux of my new album, Peace, I, I say, when freedom is outlawed, only outlaws will be free. You exactly. know, we're all, we are all an enemy of the state. And the one cool thing is, is because I really am against divide and conquer, is we all are in this together mm -hmm. because we are all enemies of the state. Mm -hmm. Every one of us. Yes, we all might have different, you know, things and ways that we live and and, and it actually goes worldwide because government's everywhere. So mm -hmm. really, it's all of us, the whole world. And we're and we're built. We're here for much better things. Look at what we've accomplished, yeah. you know. But look at how we've been coerced and you know mm -hmm. kept in cage and behind walls to live a certain way that they tell us. Yeah, I, I saw a, a list a few years ago of um, reasons that the that you would be considered suspicious or a terrorist by the by the federal government. And uh, <laughs> the reasons are just amazing. Like, like uh, you know, a person who talks about their rights, a person who mentions the Constitution, a person who homeschools, <laughs> a person who talks about police brutality. <laughs> you know? Yeah, a person who cares. A person who, anyone, right? <laughs> anyone who cares or has compassion, you should really second guess and maybe not want to hang out with. And you might want to report them to your local fusion center. And for all the listeners out there, fusion centers are real. Look them up. Mm -hmm. It'll take you to spooky Ooga Booga land to know <laughs> that people that you work with might be working part-time at a fusion center and just listening to people's calls and reporting people that look suspicious. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's very strange. But we live in that world, so don't ignore it. Don't deny it. You know, I mean, it, it's great. It's like, I, I'm just here to tell this guy that he's on fire over here. And if he doesn't want to listen, then, you know, I'm sorry he's going to burn. But I, I'm trying to let people know that there's a problem. Right. You know, that's that's it. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, basically, yeah, what we try to do is, is first of all, um, describe the injustice, describe that government. There is no such thing as a as a, um, a government that protects the people, right? Because the first thing, or the government that protects property rights, right? Because the first thing that government, every government does is violate those property rights through taxation, right? Through involuntary uh, confiscation of, of money. So there is no such thing as a government that, that protects property rights. You know, even a limited government is a, is a, is a limited master that, you know, violates you limitedly, <laughs> limitedly, and it's still immoral. Like, you know, uh, at what percentage... Um, you know, if zero percent taxation is freedom, at what percentage and and hundred percent taxation is complete slavery? At what percentage is it not slavery, right? Because the way I look at it, even 05 percent taxation is still slavery. Because if you don't pay that 05 percent, violence will come to you, right, in the form yes. of big, broad-shouldered men with guns, most likely. <laughs> yeah, you don't have a voluntary choice, right, to pay. I mean, they they make you pay by force. And the, and the worst part about that is, is yes, it's your income and your blood, sweat, and tears taken from you, but it's also used against you. Mm -hmm. I mean, nothing that government builds is, is – it works. None of it works. So when people you know, go by and they're like, oh, these schools and this museum and this, and I'm like, are you impressed by that? <laughs> I mean, we, we could make something way better. Mm -hmm. look, at, look at eighth grade – education levels compared to now to 1912 mm -hmm. you know people in college can't even pass an eighth grade math test in 1912 <laughs> you're impressed by this i'm not impressed by this i'm not you know yeah, oh cool 
no, we got this new football stadium that we all built and they, they took the money by force and it's, you know, it's neat. And I say, well, first of all, where's our free tickets since we paid for the stadium <laughs> right. and second, well, I would have built a cooler one and, uh, and they just look at you dumbfounded like, you know, oh my God, this guy just, he just thinks for himself. Well, what's he mean? No government or, you yeah. know, they wouldn't, they wouldn't be here to make all this happen. They don't make anything happen. They make things not happen. They destroy things. Mm -hmm. You know, they already, they destroy your way of life. They already take from you by force mm -hmm. and they rule you by force and everything that they build is null and void. And that's what, that's what I'm saying with man down. I try to get everybody to realize, you know, go ahead and voice your opinion. But like I went out and protested for years mm -hmm. and when I was in New York, you know, on 9-11 mm -hmm. and I got thrown into a free speech zone. In a cage and had an AR-15 pointed at my face. Really, I realized, mm -hmm. well, this is pointless. You know, mm -hmm. well, who am I? I'm, I mean, these these people aren't going to listen to me. They got everything banking on this. So then I, you know, really got philosophical with it and started opening up the Pandora's box and realized, you know, this is the way to do it. With one conversation with one person, already letting them know that they're free, and all that we got to do is walk away from these masters. Right, exactly, and it's like um, that. This um, cartoon, I like. You know, you see the the politician on the plank, and the people are standing on the plank, ho holding him over this cliff. And then, you know, all you have to do is walk off the plank. <laughs> yes. Right? Not give yes. him your support, your participation, your um, obedience. Yes, it's the best. I love that. I love that. Right. Well, what's that right. quote from the 1500s? You know, all you have to do is walk away. We hold them up, and if we just walk away, they crumble. They crumble in on their own impression. Right, on their own weight, yeah. Yeah, and and going back to, you know, all the list of, uh, you know, ways... And it takes no violence, that's why I... Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, I because mean, I really don't like... <clears throat> and now you have every right to defend yourself if someone's attacking you, you know, and these guys are... You know, but when they we peacefully assemble, you better expect them. They, I mean, what they've had sound cannons since two thousand three. Mm -hmm. I guess some people really haven't really known what was growing since nine eleven, but I have, mm -hmm. and they've been using all these militarized weapons since right after nine eleven on people who had a problem with it. it you know, G eight summits and all types of things. But um, I would fully expect if you want to go out on the streets and voice your opinion, I would expect to be in the middle of a war zone. Now, do you really want you can you can do that if you want, but are you really going to change anything? Because like in Egypt, they've had three revolutions and they install a new version of the same problem every time. And it's called government. <laughs> right. So nothing has changed. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. You know, every time there's a revolution and uh, or, or hyperinflation, you know, or, uh, you know, the dictator gets assassinated. They're like, all right. So who's going to rule next? <laughs> That'll solve it, you know. <laughs> Put somebody Let's have else. Have another option. We need who are you going to vote for now? Who's going to? Who else is going to violently subjugate us for the next 10, 20 years? <laughs> Any takers? <laughs> That's a perfect statement. Violently subjugate us. Yes. <laughs> who will we bow down to next? Yeah, and and and, that, and I and I agree with you that um uh you know protesting and going out in the streets and and with your signs. I mean, it is one way to um, gather attention, but it is kind of a dangerous way because those people really uh, attract more violence, more, you know, police and, uh, you know, the, the um, how would you call that, the, the, the tear gas, you know, the mustard gas, the pepper spray, all that kind of stuff. They attract that. And so it's really a more dangerous way to, uh, to raise awareness. And, and I think, you know, using the Internet, I think we have such a great tool to spread any kind of message, right? And and especially this message, which is so important. You know, it's just um, you're crazy not to use the internet, you know, to help you spread it. Yeah, it's a risk, and if people want to take it, they can. Like I know people get upset. Like I, but see, they don't. We're all individuals, and we all live a different life. Mm -hmm. I've done that mm -hmm. before. I went out, and you know, me and all my friends all throughout the country, and lots of people went out. Mm -hmm. But you know, when you start seeing. <laughs> when you start seeing, you know, a war break out over you wanting to voice your opinion, you realize, well, the point is proven here. Right. <laughs> These dudes, I mean, do you guys see what they're doing? Yeah. You know, so if people don't get it by then, you know, that, but it, it's sad, but most people don't care until something happens to them.
and and the way I look at it too, it's it's kind of like begging too. When you're out there and you're your yeah. signs, you know, you know, um, I don't know, uh, let's hold these wall these Wall Street, you know evil people accountable or whatever you know it's like you're begging your politician do something about this please please do something master please change things master please yeah you're and asking them yeah you're, you're asking, asking wrong, the you're asking the people who who, who uh who, you know, who calls the problem who calls the problem again so you know what we're trying to do we're trying to talk to the people themselves directly not the politicians <laughs> they're not going to change things right or change right. things for the better <laughs> no i mean i i and uh, i think it would be amazing like um I don't know. It, it, it's it's scary and it's sad. Like, because we kind of a lot of us saw this happening. But okay, I saw footage from Ferguson. Okay, mm -hmm. where all the people were outside, and and the, these people have been ruled by force and intimidated by militarized police forever. And everyone came outside of their house, all ages, races, and creeds, and moved these police off of the streets without touching them. They just did it by pure, the same thing that the cops do to us: pure intimidation. Mm -hmm. And the look on these officers' faces was kind of scary. Because I also saw another video making man down of a person being beat in Target, okay, mm -hmm. by five police officers, one person, and everyone in the Target, like the civilians, were like, oh, no, you can't do this. They actually were going to step in and help some, uh, uh, someone being brutalized. Yeah. And to see the look on the five officers' faces, I, I really saw a glimpse of a thing I don't want to see happen. And I, I, you know, I, I, I hate violence and war at all costs. It's not going to solve anything. You know, if, if there's, if there's, if we could get po even police to understand that, Hey, we want to hire you and we want to hold you accountable. Mm -hmm. You just got to walk away from these people that rule us by force and start a security company mm -hmm. and we'll hire you and it'll be an awesome thing. I mean, that's what we got to do. Cause I really can't stand these fake revolutions. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a lot of, um, you know, people who have these various government positions, they do have, they, they, they're, they're kind of working in jobs that can be replicated in the free market. Oh, like, yeah. Like police and private defense or or even teachers in public schools, right? They can go to private schools or, you know, start their own small little thing. Um, yeah. And uh, except, I guess, IRS, you know, they, they really have, really have <laughs> they would be useless. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> they can go be shoe salesmen. You right. Know? <laughs> They'll be really good at that. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yeah, yeah. So, so police in in one sense, uh, like uh, there's a guy that um, that's on the Seeds of Liberty podcast. He's a ex uh, military guy, and and so he was saying that you know we should really try to appeal to soldiers and police because if we can get them on our side, you know, because they're so skilled already in combat and things like that and strategy. <laughs> the way he described it, he's like it's like having uh, a set of Swiss Army knives on your side. <laughs> Yes. Yes. It's very true. I have a friend who, um, he, you know, he's going into security. He's trying to start a security company mm -hmm. and I, I really get him excited about it. I'm like, bro, you understand when I talk about my music, you see what's going on in the world. And he's like, yeah, yeah. And I go, people are going to come to you. You are the future. <laughs> You're going to have a huge company. If you take this serious and get your training and get your, get, you know, do, play their game right now, get your paperwork, do whatever you got to do. But you are the future because people want to be able to hold someone accountable. This this is ridiculous. So he really and through that door, you know, mentioning that I got him to think, you know, about a free market and about volunteerism and about you know anarchism and he, he people already get it. I, I I actually think most people are all already anarchists because they don't want to be ruled. They don't believe in being ruled. They just don't know they are. Yeah. Yeah, I saw an interesting uh, statistic in this book I'm reading uh, called Feardom, How Politics uh, like Rules You by Fear by uh, Connor Boyack. And he was saying um, that uh, the, the, the odd that you'll, be, you, that you'll die by a terrorist is like 1 in 20 million. And the odds that you're going to die by a lightning bolt is 1 in 5 million. And the odds that you'll die in a, in a, in a, in a car crash is like one in 500,000. You know, the odds you'll die in a, in the bathtub is like one in 800,000. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so there's, there's more likely to, to die in your bathtub or by a lightning bolt <laughs> than by a terrorist. <laughs> more people died from peanuts than terrorism. Right. You know, right. And from allergic thing, reaction. Yeah. And the same thing with police brutality is like, you know, um, um, I think it's like you're, you're, you're you know, you're uh, one 
in uh, 55, uh, you're 55 times more likely to die from police than you are by terrorists. <clears throat> so people are afraid oh, of, yeah. of boogeymen and ocean away, whereas their true oppressors and um, subjugators are here at home uh, with license to kill. Yes, license to kill. And, you know, a quarter of the world's prison population is in America. Right. So that's freedom. That's right. the freest country in the world. <laughs> they hate us for it's our freedoms, little, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, they hate us, you know. I mean, no, the the, the whole premise of Man Down and, and my music, you know, in general, that one is just really hard hitting. But, you know, I got other songs and albums that go on about it. But you're not free. And if you think you are, just, <laughs> just look at the prison population. <laughs> I mean, it's horrible. And I feel bad for kids, you know, with the war on drugs and, and just really cops having an excuse, government having an excuse to mm. do whatever they want. They break up families. They take away fathers. Mm -hmm. You know, no, there, there's people in jail who harm no one but themselves. Mm -hmm. That's not a criminal. No victim, no crime. Who they harm? They harm themselves and they're in jail. No. And they talk about like they're helping people and rehabilitating people and and no, it doesn't work like that. Like I'm one of the few people on holidays. I actually like really feel for the people that are in jail and families that have members of their family in jail because I know not all of them deserve to be there. I know it. Mm -hmm. And I think about that and really I, I wish people thought about that more because it's kind of gut wrenching when you realize just how many people are in prison in the United States. Yeah, I think I think it's something like 60 percent of uh, people in prison. I guess federal prisons are there from drug related offenses <laughs> you know sure. and it's just it's just tragic they're all victimless crimes and and uh, you know one of my favorite um uh, memes is uh, you see a bunch of um, you know you see a bunch of prisoners in in prison and it says it says just a few more laws and utopia will have been reached yeah <laughs> yeah that's all no. we need right more yep. violence in the system <laughs> No, it goes back to what we were saying earlier with people looking at police, like, you know, anyone getting pulled over, anyone having an encounter with police, mm -hmm. they're assumed to be guilty. Right. That mentality has got to change because the state, you know, is there to take your money and you're, you are harming no one. And it can escalate very quickly into if you don't comply, you just might die. And as I say in the song, I just wish next time. Think about it, because it could be you. Yeah, yeah. One of my favorite quotes uh, from um, from the uh, the Nazi era in Nazi Germany is, uh, I forget who said it, but um, he's like, you know, first they came for the union workers, but I did not speak out because I was not a union uh, worker. Then they came for the Jews. I did not speak out because I was not a Jew. And then they came for me, and nobody came to help me because... Or, or or nobody uh, spoke for there me. Was nobody because, left. Yeah, yeah. there's nobody left to speak for me, right? So, um, you know, it's so important that that you know we recognize that other people from other countries, or even people in our own country, that we're all the same. You know, all this infighting, black versus white, riches versus poor. You know, employer versus employee, legal versus illegal immigrant. You know, it, it's all you know divide and conquer, right? It's it, it's all just petty infighting that and that's the kind of that's the kind of distractions that you know rulers and masters and politicians thrive on because they don't see the true injustice right they don't see how much we're being robbed how much we're being caged and beaten into submission when they encourage you know this kind of um <laughs> you know racism and that's the other thing with racism is like it's so it's so um encouraged and stirred up in the in the media if you notice it they love it because it just gets people focused on that you know it's oh, yeah. it's, it's the white we people it's right it's a weapon it's a weapon and um i mean it's divide and conquer because like there, we have immigration crisis all over the world and people care about humans and you know they have something to say about people you know, immigrating, but they have nothing to say about the people who cause the problem for mm -hmm. people to risk their life to cross oceans or to, you know, risk their life to come cross imaginary lines drawn from space <laughs> by dictators. Mm -hmm. They have nothing. They have no problem with the bombs that were dropped or the criminals that run their government. They want to point their finger at these people trying to flee war zones and get mad at them. It's disgusting.
Yeah, right. Uh, blame the victim. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, I saw footage from Europe um, of, you know, people being held, you know, who are escaping Syria. And I, I'm really wondering what's going on with humanity. They're at a crossroad. I know a lot of good people are coming up and taking in refugees from all around the world. and mm -hmm. But I, I just don't, I don't see people letting other people be harmed to this extent for much longer. So our message is even more important than it ever has been. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's getting more and more important as uh, these, uh, you know, oppressive socialist countries are, are collapsing, you know, as well as the U.S. very soon. Um, and, um, and people are, you know, people's lives are being destroyed. And, you know, Obama's foreign policy and his drone, you know, mass murder, drone bombing and invasions and occupations and, um, <laughs> that's not helping anything, of course. Uh, so just making matters worse. And, uh, most likely he's causing the war zone that these refugees are fleeing from. Uh, surprise, surprise. So <laughs> he and he and he and his homies, all of the, all of the emperors have no clothes on. Right. right all, right. all, all of the governments, everyone at the United Nations, you know, you know, head of the security council, security is what they call it. Really. Yeah. They're. <laughs> They're the most terroristic organization out there. Just right. dropping bombs after bombs on people, and uh -huh. collateral collateral damage is accepted by the state. And you know, by free humanity, we don't accept that. It's we don't accept other people being harmed. Right. Exactly. Well, uh, I don't want to take up any more of your time, uh, Brent. Thanks a lot. So uh, before we go, can you uh, just plug your uh, how people can reach you? You know, your um, uh, your YouTube channel, your Facebook, your your website. For sure. Um, bloodofthebrave.com is the easiest way to get there. Uh, search for Blood of the Brave all over the internet, Facebook, uh, Instagram, Twitter. I'm on SoundCloud. You can download a lot of my music for free, and you can stream my music on Spotify, on your Xbox, or any other mobile device. I love everyone out there. Thanks for listening, and thank you for having me on the show. Yeah, definitely. So so before we go, can you give uh, j just give one last message to people about the police and what, what you think... Uh, you know, how you see the future and, and what you think should be done about the police? Nobody should accept, you know, if, if evil is, if evil is never seen, people will act like it doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. So first of all, we got to recognize that the evil is there. That is why my music video, Man Down, should be seen worldwide by eyes everywhere. So we can see just how bad it is and then examine the fact that this is not right and there are solutions to this. And we are capable of, you know, a better world and we shouldn't accept this. This is not okay. Anyone you cannot um, hold accountable does not work for you. So stop believing that government works for you. They are not the answer. Yep. Well said. Definitely. So, and if anybody wants to um, donate uh, to my show, <clears throat> except uh, Bitcoin, PayPal, and uh, Patreon, you can go on my Patreon account and, uh, and set up a donation thing once a month um, would be greatly appreciated because uh, although this is a labor of love, um, it's not free. <laughs> there are costs. So I would love to keep doing this, providing you guys with content because I just love uh, spreading the message of liberty, volunteerism, freedom, and anarchy as much as possible. It makes me... Uh, it, it delights me to uh, talk about this stuff. So thanks a lot, um, uh, Brent, for the awesome conversation. Really appreciate it. Uh, I appreciate you having me on and all you do to open up hearts and minds. Thank you, sir. Yes, yes. We'll have you back on for your next um, uh, viral music video. We'll do it. <laughs> awesome. So this is uh, Peaceful Anarchism on the Voluntary Virtues Network and TheSeedsOfLiberty.com and TheConsciousResistance.com. Wishing everyone have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye.